Patrick is currently all the rage and I am all about that trend. So we're going to explore that in today's video and not only do we have one project, but we're gonna have two in one video. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel and welcome to another sewing tutorial. I am so excited about today's tutorial because it's two for one, so double is better and it's also all about fun patchworky quilt like fabric. Quilted things are such a fun kind of trend in fashion right now, just repurposing quilts into modern fun clothes and especially in the world of sewing people turning quilts into clothes or quilting items of clothes or using fabric that looks like quilts to make clothes all of those things I am just all about right now I have always loved quilts and so that is the inspiration behind today's video specifically with two pieces of fabric that I have been holding onto for a while and trying to figure out the perfect projects for them. So we're gonna tackle that in today's video and I'm gonna show you how to essentially make myself into a quilt because that is the goal. I've always loved the unique self-expressive nature of quilting and I think it's just so fun from a creative perspective, the skill that it takes, but also just the fun elements of matching, mixing and matching different prints and fabrics together to create a design and a motif in a really fun pattern that is different than usual. And since today's video is centered around the self-expressive nature of quilt-like fabrics and projects, what better way to express yourself than with your accessories? I have currently been loving the brand Ana Luisa jewelry. I've been trying to kind of up my game in the jewelry department and I'm such a gold jewelry person. Ana Luisa jewelry recently sent me some of their pieces and I have literally been wearing them every day because they are just that good. These earrings which are just such fun takes on kind of the gold hoop classic. These earrings are so great they have not bothered my ears at all which I'm always looking for high quality earrings that don't irritate my ears and that hold up throughout multiple wears and these have definitely become my new favorite pair of earrings. I've also been loving this heart pendant necklace because I feel like it's just a fun classic but it has that kind of girliness to it and the high quality nature of this jewelry means that I can wear it all day, wear it in the shower, it doesn't tarnish, it holds up which is not the case for a lot of other gold plated jewelry that I've gotten before. Sourcing unique pieces of gold jewelry to add to my collection is definitely of prime importance to me and this really fun chunky watch band bracelet it was just such a fun piece to pick from Ana Luisa jewelry. I love how it's not so dainty and delicate like other bracelets and it kind of gives the illusion that you're wearing a watch without it actually being a watch and it's just been so fun to add a fun kind of accessory to my wrist when styling my outfits. If you're looking to up your jewelry game with high quality classic pieces check out Anna Luisa Jewelry. They're currently having a 35% off sale right now, so it's the perfect time to get yourself a little something special to elevate your everyday looks with a great piece of jewelry that will stand the test of time or to buy a special something for a special someone around the holiday season. So check out Anna Luisa Jewelry, the link's in my bio. All right, so this is the fabric for my first project. It is this really fun kind of haphazard patchwork printed fabric that I got from my grandma. It kind of gives off fall vibes mixed with summer vibes because of the flowers and the bees and the ladybugs but the colors overall to me are fall and patchwork just kind of speaks fall to me so I thought that this would be really fun to make a dress out of. All right so this is kind of my inspiration for the dress. Very very rough sketch but the general gist. The kind of inspiration is very prairie-like but also very feminine, kind of playing into a lot of the kind of Scandi fashion styles with fun puff sleeves, ruffles, the midi skirt. That is typically what I incorporate into a lot of my designs because it's for fall and I'm also going to be wearing it into winter. I want to make sure I have a long sleeve so it will actually be warm. And then I have been loving these just like dropped waists where they really just kind of like come down into a V. Kind of, I feel like it's mimicking Victorian fashion and I think it just looks so, so pretty. We're gonna have darts in the bodice and then a midi skirt with ruffles. 
So I already have both my pattern pieces for my bodice. All I did to adapt this was use my slopers, which are just a regular darted bodice that fit at your natural waist. I just dropped the waist in the front to kind of make that V shape. And then I also narrowed my shoulders a bit. For the sleeves, I'm just going to use a standard sleeve pattern that I drafted a couple years ago and I use for a lot of things. And then the skirt, we are just going to cut everything out of rectangles. If you are wanting to make a dress like this for yourself and you don't have your own slippers, any kind of dress that is going to have darts in the bodice, darts in the front and the back, you can easily adapt by just dropping down the waist and then you can change up the skirt to be whatever style you want it to be and grab sleeves from another pattern to make it your own. Since I had all my pattern pieces already made, I decided to just time lapse the whole cutting part since that is pretty time consuming, but here I am cutting out all of my bodice pieces, my sleeve, and all of the different ruffles. Alright, so we have all of our pieces cut out for the patchwork parade. Just have our sleeves. We have this ruffly piece for the neckline, our bodice front and back, plus lining all the ruffling pieces and the two skirt pieces. I just need to cut out pockets, but we're gonna sew it all together. I don't know why I decided to include these clips in this specific tutorial, but I realized that in my sewing tutorials, I never really show the behind the scenes, setting up your sewing machine, changing out your thread, winding a new bobbin with the right color to match your thread, threading your sewing machines, all that stuff. So anyways, here's me setting up my sewing machine with black thread to get ready to sew this project. Okay, so we're starting off the sewing process for this first patchwork dress by first sewing the darts. Anytime I have a bodice or a dress bodice that has darts, you obviously have to sew those first before doing anything else. So we're gonna sew the darts for the lining and then the darts for the actual outside printed fabric. If you're constructing any kind of clothing that is going to be fitted, you're probably going to be using darts. So the easiest way to sew darts is just starting at the widest edge and sewing to the narrowest edge. Also, you might notice that I edited this sewing tutorial a little bit differently by leaving in some of the sounds of sewing. So let me know if you like that or if you like the old way where everything's just voiceovers. I think having the background sounds of what's actually going on while you're sewing is really interesting and kind of adds to the whole sewing process. So we're just continuing sewing those darts. There's a total of eight darts because there are four darts on the outside printed shell of the garment and then there are four darts on the lining of the bodice as well. After all of our darts are sewn, we are just going to press those darts. I always like to press any of my darts to the side. So for the front bodice, I'm going to press my darts away from the center towards the sides of the bodice and then same thing for the back. Alright, so we've got our lining done, and then we have our bodice, which is the same thing, it's just the actual fabric. So now I need to make the ruffle for the neckline and then sew it all together. I gathered my neck ruffles off camera, but now I'm just going to sandwich those ruffles in between the outer printed side of my bodice and the lining. So the ruffles themselves are actually just going to be placed straight onto the printed fabric with the printed side of the ruffles facing me. And that printed side is going to be matched up with the right side of the lining. Then we're just gonna pin along the neckline and sew it down. So here I am just sewing all of those sandwich layers together so that the ruffles are attached along the curve of the neckline and then the lining is sewn in place along the neckline. And now you can see that when I flip the lining away from the right side of the fabric, all of those raw edges along the neckline are going to be in the inside. And since our neckline is a curve, we're gonna go in with just the tip of our scissors and snip about every one inch along that curve. This is going to help our lining lay nice and flat once we flip it to the inside and press it down. 
Anytime you sew major curves, it's best practice to clip or notch along those curves so that when you flip that extra layer, the direction that you need it to be, those curves will lay nice and flat. So then we're just going to press it with our iron and then we're gonna top stitch along the neckline to hold the ruffle in place. Moving on to the sleeves now, these sleeves are going to be very faint puff sleeves. So I just have a small section of basting along the top curve of the sleeve that I gathered. Then I sewed down the inside of the sleeves to make it a full like sleeve casing to go over your arm. And once all that is done, I just pinned it into my armhole, right sides together all the way around. At this point, the side seams of my lining for my bodice and my outer bodice are already sewn together, so that's why we have an armhole that we are going to be sewing our sleeve into. Got the neckline done and the lining, the ruffles, and the sleeves. Now just the skirt. I realized I never showed how I put the elastic at the edge of my sleeve so you could do a channel of elastic. I just cut a strip of elastic and stretched it as I sewed it to create the bunchy effect. And now it's time to construct my skirt. You might notice the skirt shape on the left side dips down a bit. The reason for this is because I adjusted my bodice to have that deep V and so I adjusted that by removing the top part of my skirt. Now we're just gonna sew the sides of the skirt together with the pockets. There's a diagram for how to do that, very short crash course, and then we're gonna finish the, all those edges on the serger. And now it's time for my least favorite part of sewing, which is the gathers. So I adjust my sewing machine to a basting stitch. I sewed two rows of basting stitches, and then that allows me to create really nice gathers. I really love flowing roughly things that I'm sewing, but the issue with that is that it requires tons of gathering, which is not fun. For adjusting our skirt, we need to make sure that we find the center front, the part where it dips into a V, so that we pin that to the curved V portion of our bodice. I'm also gonna match up my side seams and then evenly adjust all of my gathers for the back sections and the front sections. Once all of my gathers are evenly spaced, I can then pin my skirt to my bodice. So here I am just pinning the gathered sections of my skirt right sides together to the bottom edge of my bodice, not to the lining, just to the outer bodice. And then we're gonna sew that together to attach our skirt to our bodice. So we've attached the skirt to the bodice. We have this nice like V right here. And then my pins are in this because I'm gonna top stitch over the right side of the fabric to stitch in the lining. So I only sewed the gathered part of the skirt onto the like outer shell of the bodice. And then the lining I just fold it under. And then we're just gonna kind of top stitch, stitch in the ditch to attach it all together. So it'll be nice and clean on the inside and then pretty on outside. So like I explained in the last clip, this is how I decided to attach my lining to the bodice. I am just now going to sew right on the edge of that bodice where I have pinned all of the layers together. Moving on to the ruffles of my skirt, I used three sections that were the width of my fabric, so 45 inches in width. I sewed them together and then I gathered them and now we're going to evenly space those gathers around the bottom of our skirt, pin the ruffle to the bottom of our skirt and sew it together. So I'm almost done with the patchworky dress right here. I just have to put my zipper in it. I don't know what it is about this dress, but I, it has just taken way longer than like any dress. I've been working on this for like four days. Um, I don't know, it's just been such a slow process. And it also doesn't help that it had like the gathered skirt, the ruffles on the bottom of the skirt, the ruffles on the neckline. I don't know why I do it to myself by adding ruffles and gathers to so many things because it's so tedious and time consuming. Um, but I have to go see if I can find a longer zipper in all my sewing storage. And then this is done and then we're on to other patchwork quilted things. 
right, the zipper is in. I sewed down the ripple on the bodice. So this dress is done. On to the next project. All right, this is our second quilty print fabric for the video. And this is also the fabric that made me totally give like an utter exclamation in the middle of a thrift store because I saw it and I literally went, oh my goodness, this is so amazing. Because it literally is. I mean, just how cool is this? It has all of these kind of fun quilty print motifs in different like prints of the fabric. You have strawberries and florals, you have these cute little houses. It's so fun. So it's basically just like a giant block print of this fun table setting. And then the edges are edged in the houses, obviously. And so I knew that I wanted to make some kind of fun dress from this. I've been trying to figure out what it was going to be. And I think I finally have an idea. So I will show you what my idea is. It's a pretty simple dress. So hopefully it will be as basic to sew as it is in my head. But just how cute is this? I love it. All right, so I saw this collection on Pinterest. I don't even know what this brand is, but I'm obsessed with this patchworky fabric and I love kind of the prairie-esque vibes. Patchwork definitely gives me prairie vibes and I'm all about that. So this dress on the left is kind of the design we're going for. It's a pretty basic dress because it's more of a smock pinafore style bodice. There's not a ton of fitting. The sleeves are basically just giant squares you sew into it and then you're gonna have a long skirt. So that's what we're gonna try to go with. It's gonna have a tie neckline. I don't think I'm gonna do all this piping, but I am gonna do with this little bit of ruffle. So this is what it's gonna look like. So this is the idea, is that we have basically like a square for the bodice. That's going to be made out of like the larger um, square print of the fabric. I wanna do ruffles right on the edge of the fabric and that's going to be out of like the small little house prints. It's going to be right there, then you have these giant sleeves and then a skirt. So that's essentially what we're going to try to go with. A pretty simple-ish dress out of this patchworky fabric, but with all of the crazy designs of the fabric, I didn't want anything too crazy for the actual dress. So let's dive into the pattern making of this. All right, so I'm making my own pattern for this dress, but these are two dress patterns that are very similar to what I'm doing. This one kind of has the whole boxy kind of square sleeved bodice. It's kind of a combination of these two, but this is a really cute dress. You could do if you don't want to make your own pattern. And then this dress in this version, but with sleeves, is kind of essentially what I'm doing. The construction's just going to be different because it's not going to be as fitted, but this is a really cute pattern from Butterick. For creating the pattern for this dress, I first started with taking some measurements of my dress form. You can easily take these measurements on yourself. So I just took kind of a across the chest, across the bust, and across the waist. Um, but it was kind of more in the center. I also measured from shoulder to shoulder, and then kind of my side waist. I'm going to take all those measurements and use them together. All right, so these are the measurements I ended up with. The kind of width of my bust slash chest was nine and a half inches, and then my shoulder to my waist was 13 inches. So that is what I am going to kind of draft out with my lines, and that's going to become the center of this dress. Now keep in mind that the style of this dress is more of kind of a pinafore slash smock style. So what I'm actually drawing out right here is only going to fit into kind of the center of my chest. It's not even going to extend to the sides under my arms. It's actually going to be extended to those points once I add my sleeves. So I drew out my nine and a half inches wide, my 13 inches long, and now I'm going to add in my half an inch seam allowance on the sides and the top of this bodice piece. There's also going to be a slit down the front center of this bodice that's going to have a tie. This is going to allow you to actually get it on and off over your head, so I just drew that in. You can really make this however deep you want it to be. I also like to add in labels and pattern markings to anything that I'm drafting so I know what is what. Now I'm going to draw a curve for my neckline since this bodice piece so far has just been a square. This is actually going to be the curved neckline section. And we have a fun guest with us in this video today. This is my new sewing helper, Miss Darcy. All right, now it's time to draft the sleeves. This whole pattern is very boxy. It's essentially just 
rectangles and squares. So my sleeve kind of length from like the top of my shoulder to my waist is going to be the same length as my bodice. And then these long lines that I'm drawing are just the entire length of my sleeve, however long I want it to be. I want these to kind of be long sleeves. And then I also need a little bit of a curve for my sleeve. So I measured about two inches in. Those two inches on that right side are going to extend the sides of my bodice. And then I'm just gonna curve it up to create more of a sleeve shape and add in all of my sleeve allowance. Now it's time to start cutting out all of my pattern pieces. Because of the print of this fabric, I wanted to be very strategic in how I actually use the print and cut out my pieces. So my bodice is going to be cut out of one of like the fruit bowl pitcher squares and that will be the front and the back of my bodice and then I'm going to utilize all the rest of the print in various ways. My sleeves are just going to be one of the kind of bold square sections and then the little houses and then the ruffles for the sides of my bodice are going to be just strips of the little houses. All right, so we've got everything cut out for this dress. We have the skirt, the pockets, the ruffle for the bodice, the sleeves and their extensions, and then the bodice. So let's sew it up. All right, so we're first going to start by sewing the shoulders of the lining and the shoulders of my outer bodice. So we're just pinning all those together, right sides together, and then we're gonna sew it up on the machine. So again, trying out the new editing style where I actually leave all the sounds of sewing, but when I was sewing this dress, I actually forgot to use headphones for the movies I was watching. So in the background, there's like commentary from all the Christmas movies that are going while I'm sewing this dress. That's actually something I would love to know for all of you who are sewers and watch my videos. What do you like to watch or listen to while you're sewing? Leave me a comment and tell me what it is for you. All right, so we're moving on to the ruffles of the bodice. I just hemmed in the sides and then I'm going to go put in my basting stitches to do my gathers. All right, so I made some adaptions to the bodice. Because I'm going to put ruffles on the side, I cut out a piece to extend the bodice. So it's going to be sewn from the top to the bottom like this. And the ruffle's going to sandwich in the middle of that like this. All right, now that we have the front and the back of our bodice sewn together, it just looks like this giant rectangle. Here I have my ruffles all gathered up. We're just making sure they are the correct length for the sides of these bodice pieces. And then we are going to align those with the sides, right sides together and sew them down. But since I extended the sides of my bodice, I'm going to sandwich those ruffles in between the extender and my main bodice piece. So here's what the ruffles look like sandwiched in between my bodice extender and my main bodice. Now we're just gonna sew this all together. So if you're wondering why I added the kind of extender to the sides of my bodice, the main reason was I realized I needed more width on my bodice for it to actually fit. And two, I didn't want the ruffles to completely be on the edges of my shoulders where my sleeves were. So now we have the ruffles attached. It is time to attach the lining to the bodice by pinning it right sides together. And we're just going to be sewing around the neckline and then the lining will flip to the inside. I also created my little ties and I'm going to sandwich those in between the lining and my bodice and sew those down as we sew around the neck. So here I'm attaching my lining to my bodice by sewing around the neckline. I'm just sewing around it at a fourth of an inch seam allowance, which is just at the edge of my presser foot. And thankfully after sewing this lining in, it kind of opened up my neckline in a little bit more because I was worried that it was going to be a little bit too tight, but it actually ends up all working perfectly. Because our neckline is a lot of curves, we're gonna go in and snip just like we did on the previous dress. I snip just with the tips of my scissors about every inch. This is going to help everything lay nice and flat once we flip our lining to the inside. So this is what the neckline of the dress looks like after I have pressed it. We now have our ties. It looks beautiful on the inside and the outside. So now it's time to attach our sleeves. I didn't cut my sleeves on a fold of fabric. So in order to make them wide enough to go from the front to the back of my arms, I just have to sew a long strip along the top to attach my two pieces together. Okay. 
and as always, any raw edges are finished on my serger. So now I'm going to attach my sleeves to the side edges of my bodice. I added a little bit of a gather to the top of my sleeve. In hindsight, I wish I would have made my sleeves wider so I could do more gathers, but a little gather still looked really good. Since my sleeves and my bodice are all straight edges, it was really easy to attach these. We just pin the sleeve to the side of the bodice and we are going to sew that down. All right, we have the bodice and the ruffles and these giant long sleeves, which are basically just humongous square-like things. I do have to make some adjustments on the fit here on the sides. Keeping with the theme of this dress basically being just rectangles and squares, that is how the skirt was constructed, just with the leftover fabric, whatever width it was. I added pockets, I sewed down the sides and around. All right, so we finish this dress. Got our ruffles and our ties is all hemmed. We've got our sleeves. I ended up shortening them because this length ended up being perfect. And it's so fun and so cute and loose. I think I'm gonna call this the wilder dress. And when I learn digital pattern making, this is gonna be a pattern that I think I'm gonna release. So let me know if you'd be interested in this dress pattern or just interested in me releasing different sewing patterns for like projects that I really love and patterns that I've created. All right, so we finished both of our fun patchworky print dresses and now it's time to go film them for the reveal. Um, they turn out so cute. I'm so obsessed with them and I have so many more like actual quilting projects on the horizon, in my brain, ideas. Um, so we're gonna go film the reveals for these. <laughs> outside where it actually snowed two days ago. So this is gonna be fun. It's gonna be chilly because again, if you didn't know, I recently moved from Texas to Wisconsin and I'm experiencing my first like actually cold winter even though it's technically fall, I guess November. But anyways, I think these dresses are actually gonna look really, really cool in the snow. So let's show you how they turn out. All right, that was cold. On to shoot and film the second outfit. Another cool to reveal, but the key is layering and honestly just like the background of snow. So pretty. Um, so anyways, those were my two quilt printed dresses. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for even more fun quilting things coming soon. You're not gonna wanna miss it. It's gonna be so fun and awesome. And also let me know if one day I start creating patterns to sell for you all to sew the things that I had designed and love and the dresses that I've created tutorials for. Let me know if you would ever be interested in shopping those patterns, especially the dresses in this video. Thanks for watching. Bye.